welcome to the new session uh, in this session we are going to focus on the relationship between price and demand through a curve called demand response curve so what is the demand response curve so uh, generally the uh, retailers are going to offer a price for a particular product or service in the market now the market is going to react by realizing a particular demand at that particular price point so the demand response curve essentially tells us what is the realized demand at a price that is offered for a particular product or service now why is this a business analytics topic uh, well uh, the the demand response curve itself uh, uh, is a is a uh, two uh, two variable plot uh, price on the x axis and demand on the y axis price on the x axis demand on the y axis so at a particular uh, so we keep changing the price and we keep realizing the demand at that particular price uh, so uh, today's uh, uh, session or a couple of sessions are going to focus on how do we estimate this demand response curve uh, so uh, uh, we are going to we are going to discuss various aspects various relationship types between price and demand and in general uh, the basic mechanism of this uh, price uh, uh, and demand relationship through this demand response curve okay so uh, uh, typically uh, this is what uh, uh, a demand response curve is going to look like uh, uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, the, this this uh, particular curve a uh, rough curve which is down uh, like this this is this is what we are going to call as demand response curve so uh, what 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 does it say so uh, at a particular price let us say p1 this is the price offered and you hit the curve you look at this left and this q1 is the quantity demanded by the market at that particular price point now uh, we know that uh, we are going to adjust our demand based on the prices that are offered in the market for example if price is p3 uh, the quantity that is going to be demanded by the market is going to be q3 so every uh, retailer has to decide what is the best price and let us let us call this best price as p star what is the best price to be offered for that particular product or service at that particular uh, uh, optimal let us say optimal price point there is going to be some optimal demand realized in the market now uh, let us say that uh, we make a mistake in uh, calculating this optimal price and we end up uh, we end up uh, pricing more right we end up pricing more uh, there is always a potential for the retailer to reduce the price which means go left uh, to, to reduce the price and capture more demand right because at p star the demand is going to be q star if we reduce the price if we reduce the price from p star to p1 the demand is going to jump up from q star to q1 so uh, this is the this is there is always a latent demand which is realized by this part of the uh, uh, region right this this region represents the latent demand how do we capture the latent demand by reducing the price right by reducing the price we can capture more and more demand now this portion of the uh, plot represents what is called as consumer surplus now uh, consumer surplus essentially is the benefit that the consumer gets by paying less and less price so if we are actually increasing the price if we are actually increasing the price from p star to p3 let us say the consumer surplus is going to be eaten away that much so this uh, light blue shaded region is going to be the uh, reduction in the consumer surplus that the consumer is getting uh, because the price is at p star and not at p3 if the price are if the prices are increased from p star to p3 the consumer surplus is going to uh, consumer surplus is going to go down uh, by this much amount by the light blue region so uh, this is this is how the uh, this is how the uh, uh, region is going to be red this is how the plot has to be red as i was saying uh, uh, so this uh, optimal price p star has to be very carefully chosen uh, so uh, if we reduce the price there is always a scope to capture more demand if we increase the price uh, the consumer surplus may get affected uh, we have, i mean just like we are talking about consumer surplus we can talk about the uh, producer surplus uh, uh, i mean uh, i'm 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 uh, pointing you to the basic economics uh, uh, course uh, which is uh, slightly outside the current uh, discussion on uh, forecasting the curve but uh, nevertheless important for the discussion 
Uh, another important uh, uh, question then is uh, if this is the price uh, if if this is the demand response curve uh, how should the how should the retailer decide this optimal price what should be the objective of uh, finalizing uh, this price now there are couple of uh, uh, ways that uh, we can go about uh, one is uh, what is called as uh, a revenue maximizing price a revenue maximizing price uh, every uh, retailer wants to maximize the revenue, right? Uh, the money that they collect uh, from the uh, customers of the uh, product and service. So uh, uh, the, that 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 should always be a concern. Uh, however, uh, we have to realize that uh, maximizing revenue may not be same as maximizing profit. So there is a profit maximizing price the price at which the profit gets maximized the price at which the revenue gets maximized and we have to keep in mind that these two may be different objectives these are sorry uh, these are different objectives we have to keep in mind that the pri optimal prices when we are maximizing revenue may be different than the optimal prices when we are maximizing the profit right how do we go about uh, with these two objectives let us discuss that later Okay, so uh, this is the basics of uh, uh, the demand response curve, uh, which is the blue curve, which is uh, which is pointed here. Okay, let us let us understand the properties of this, right? So uh, this is essentially uh, this is essentially a function that describes uh, how the demand varies as a function of price. Very similar to the uh, demand supply curve in economics. Uh, however, this is for a single seller. Uh, in a single market, right? Uh, uh, whereas uh, the demand supply curve aggregates uh, uh, various supply in the market, aggregates various demands in the market, right? So uh, this this is this is slightly different uh, from uh, that scenario where we are considering a single seller at a single time point in a single market. Uh, if you notice, there are four important things uh, that you notice from this uh, demand uh, response curve. First of all, the demand for a product is always going to be non-negative, which means that it is always going to lie on the positive side of the y-axis. You cannot have demand going negative, right? You cannot have demand going less than zero. Doesn't make sense, right? Demand cannot be negative. So the demand response curve is always going to be on the positive side. Similarly, you cannot offer uh, negative prices. I mean, uh, let us not get into the details, but negative prices. Uh, would mean that the retailer uh, uh, gives money to the uh, customer for using the product and services. Generally, doesn't happen in the uh, uh, in the market. Therefore, the, even the prices are going to be prices are going to be on the positive side. So you you don't expect uh, prices to go on the negative side, right? Prices the the lowest price is going to be zero. Uh, we are not going to look at a case where negative prices are even possible, right? So the curve is going to be non-negative in both the senses. The demand is going to be positive, even the prices offered in the market are going to be positive, right? It is it is going to be a continuous curve. So this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a nice smooth continuous curve uh, without any breakages, right? Without any breakages. So uh, uh, for example, uh, this is the uh, this is the price and this is the demand. Uh, you don't expect uh, something like this, right? Which means that you don't know you don't know uh, what the uh, demand is going to be uh, between these two uh, price points right uh, uh, so what what is what is going to be the demand so uh, are we saying that there is no demand uh, but that also means that demand is zero so uh, uh, there is not going to be a discontinuity uh, in the curve there is not going to be a discontinuity in the curve very similarly there is the, the curve is going to be very smooth and differentiable which means that uh, tangent is always possible Tangent is always possible at all the uh, all the price points, right? Uh, tangent is always possible at all the price points. So the curve is also going to be differentiable. And uh, uh, unless we are talking about very very specialized uh, goods, uh, uh, the the curve is generally going to be downward sloping. What does it mean? It means that as the prices increase, the demand for the product reduces, right? There are certain products, uh, for example, uh, 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 you can always think of uh, Giffen goods. Uh, example could be luxury items, for example, Rolex watches. Uh, Rolex watches, uh, uh, 
sometimes uh, if you increase the prices, uh, if you increase the prices, the demand for the product may actually goes up because the appeal, the exclusivity appeal for the product may go up. Uh, so, uh, but generally speaking, we are we are going to look at goods uh, where uh, as the prices are increasing, the demand is actually going to come down, right? So, the prices increase, the demand is going to come down and therefore, thus the, the curve is going to be a downward sloping curve downward sloping curve okay so these are the four important properties once again uh, the quantity is going to be non negative the prices are going to be non negative the prices are going to be non negative so it's a uh, first quadrant curve uh, the curve is quote unquote nice which means that it is continuous it is differentiable and more importantly we are going to look at a scenario where the curve is downward sloping right the curve is downward sloping which means that as the prices go up the demand goes down the demand goes down all, all right so uh, these four these four properties are important uh, as i said uh, this uh, sometimes for some goods uh, may or may not hold but we are we are right now going to not worry about those kind of goods right uh, we are going to look at goods where the demand response curve is a downward sloping curve all right 